his rhetoric has caught the interest of Americans, I think, in part because he's speaking in a kind of bombastic style that taps into the kind of, you know, us versus them tribalism that's on the rise here. I want to take a quick look um, at a rant he went on against uh, leftists who he says have ruined Argentina's economy. Al zurdo de mierda no le podés dar ni un pero, milímetro. Pero ¿Me podés definir zurdo de mierda? Que no todos lo los que, digamos, los colectivistas, <risa> los que ponen, digamos, o sea, esa idea. A ver, ¿qué, ¿qué le pones de mierda, digamos? Porque son una mierda. O sea, vos me si, estás... no, pero, pero eso, es que eso si se pensás de... Pero, no, pero, digo, pero si pensás distinto, te van, a, te van a aniquilar. Ese es el punto. Es decir, vos al zurdo no le podés dar un milímetro. Porque le das un milímetro y lo tomas para destrozarte. Es decir, usa, digo, o sea, vos no podés negociar con el zurdo. No se negocia. No se negocia con esa mierda, no se negocia porque te van a llevar puesto. Y como estamos siendo tan mejores con ellos, como los estamos aplastando en la batalla cultural, los estamos pasando de arriba, porque no solo le ganamos en lo productivo, somos superiores moralmente, somos superiores estéticamente, somos mejores en todo. Y les duele, les duele. Entonces, como no pueden pelear con las herramientas legítimas, se, ap se apalancan en el aparato represivo del Estado, poniendo torres de guita para hacernos mierda. Y aún así no pueden, no pueden. Tuvieron que bajar la nota, tuvieron que bajar la nota. ¿Me entendés? Que están perdiendo, están desesperados, están perdiendo la batalla cultural. Los zurdos de mierda, por primera vez, se ven acorralados, los zurdos de mierda. Es un intenso, captivante clip. ¿Do you agree with his sentiment that in Argentina, you can't negotiate with the leftist coalition because they'll use the state apparatus to squelch that debate and take everything away from you. Um, can I, I go? Yeah, I, go ahead. I absolutely agree. If you see it all over Latin America, when the left doesn't win in the, in the elections, they completely destroy the country. We have seen it in Chile. We have seen mm -hmm. it in Colombia. We've seen it also in, in, in Brazil with the support to Lula. So the left is obsessed with, with ruling from democracy when they win or by making a lot of, uh, um, by making the, uh, violence in the, in the streets. I, I also agree with how Millet communicates because he's engaging for decades. We have seen libertarians uh, saying, well, yeah, we have the right ideas, but no passion at all. And here comes a guy with a lot of passion. Now, the fact that we are adopting terms like cultural battle worries me because this is exactly what the Nazis or the fascists did. They want to state, to, to implement a culture by law, a culture of hatred. Uh, and then he says, we are morally superior than the, than, the, than the shitty socialists. I agree that libertarianism is morally superior. Hell, objectivism is morally superior because it, ta mm -hmm. it tells you that individuals are not uh, animals of sacrifice to the state or the church. Now, libertarians, I can say, are morally superior because they you know, defend the individual. When Javier Millet adopts conservatism, religious estates, and he talks about a moral superiority, I am worried if he's going to use the state in order to implement one kind of culture. So what are we hmm. talking about there? And he even says we are aesthetically superior because he says that people in the libertarian movement are, are more pretty than all these women uh, in the Marxist collectivists that are not even like uh -huh. shaving their legs or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, the market makes us prettier, but those are libertarian stands. So then again, I think now that Javier Millet is taking international protagonism, we have a massive opportunity to educate people in the United States and in Latin America of what libertarianism is about. So mm -hmm. if he governs and when he governs, we can be very, very accurate because what I'm worried what I really don't want it to happen is that if he comes to govern, cover, government and he betrays liberty, people will blame liberty instead of blaming him. 
which is what happened with Pinochet. It's been a right. headache for libertarians all over the region to, 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 you know, like take ourselves away from that Pinochet dictatorship, which was a capitalist dictatorship. And, yeah. and, and as Mario Vargas Llosa said, there is no such thing as a good dictatorship and a bad dictatorship. All are bad. Yeah. So I am very worried that if libertarians don't take this opportunity worldwide, if he comes into power and liberty is betrayed, people will blame neoliberalism, capitalism, yeah. when, when they are not the ones to be blamed. The issues that kind of led to Malay's rise, which I think uh, are largely the economy, the central bank, um, and the way that the political class, or I think as you put it, the, the caste that uh, is, is the way Malay frames it, I've got I pulled one more clip that I think will take us into that discussion, which um, is uh, Millet, uh, again, uh, directing a lot of passion and anger with very heated rhetoric, but in a direction that I think a lot of libertarians would agree is warranted at, at corrupt political elites. So let's take a look at this and discuss. A ver, yo creo que el gran problema argentino es un problema cultural. Es decir, esta es una sociedad que está infectada de socialismo. Y lo que hay que lograr es sacar el socialismo de la cabeza de la gente, ¿sí? Y los principales promotores de estas ideas son los políticos. Los, los políticos son una suerte de sociópatas que quieren hacernos creer que nosotros somos inválidos mentales, inválidos en todo sentido, porque no podemos vivir si no fuera por ellos. En realidad, los que no pueden vivir sin nosotros son ellos. Es decir, si el país se separara entre los que producimos de un lado y del otro lado, queda la mierda de los políticos, los sindicalistas, todo este conjunto de parásitos se hunden, se mueren. Separemos la Argentina, en la Argentina del Norte y Argentina del Sur, ¿Sabes qué? Los que estamos dispuestos a laburar nos vamos a la parte más pobre del país, le dejamos vaca muerta todo. Aun cuando se quedaran con todo, se van a hundir estas ratas porque no sirven para nada. En cambio, los que laburamos y sabemos ganarnos la vida, ¿sabes qué? Nos va a ir bien. Nosotros somos gente de bien, gente que labura y no vivimos abogando por la envidia, el odio, el resentimiento, el robo, sí, el trato desigual frente a la ley, que es esa inmundicia de la justicia social, que es lo más injusto que existe, porque implica robarle a una persona el fruto de su trabajo para dar a quien a mí se me da la gana, pero de dónde salieron esta manga de sátrapa? Entonces, ¿saben qué? Quieren, digamos, quedarse en este país, ¿saben qué? Tienen que identificar el enemigo, el enemigo son los políticos, hay que ir contra los políticos, esos son nuestros enemigos, esos son los que nos hunden en la pobreza, esos son los únicos que progresaron con este verso de la justicia social y la redistribución del ingreso. La verdadera redistribución del ingreso fue desde los que laburamos a los parásitos de los políticos. A ver, digamos, ¿por qué nació el liberalismo? Para salir del yugo opresor de los monarcas. O sea, entonces no puede ser que en un país si le vaya mejor a los parásitos de la política que el tipo que produce. Es decir, no te puede ir mejor ¿sí? siendo un parásito de la política que no produce nada y que cuando hace algo lo único que hace es daño. Porque una de las cosas que pasa cada vez que interviene el Estado se genera lo que se llama el fallo del Estado. O sea, fíjate esto, los planes con la, contra la pobreza, ¿qué hace? Genera más pobres. Mira el caso argentino. So, I mean... The person who first shared that clip with me commented that it, it almost seems ripped from the pages of an Ayn Rand novel. I want to start with Gloria this time, but Eduardo, you can share any thoughts too. Just what are your reactions to Millet's message there? I absolutely agree. I, actually, I have said uh, the same thing in different words in many forums because in Latin America, the majority of people do not understand that the government doesn't produce wealth. There is a misconception that the government is sort of like a magic spaceship where money is magically created and the politicians grant you with resources and money that magically they possess. You know, people do not get the basic idea that every cent that the government has is because they have taken, even violently, from the people who produced it. So if you don't understand that the politicians are your employees and you think that they are the kings that grant you rights and grant you resources, of course you blindly obey 
to whatever they they are going to say. And of course, the politicians are going to have a Keynesian mentality because that Keynesian mentality is the one that grants them all the powers to control the economy. It is really rare to have a politician that is going to have a free market approach. So I I absolutely agree. And about um, politicians being sociopaths, I've said this multiple times. I think that we need to have uh, not only analyze our politicians by their resume, but we should also have them for what Eduardo said, emotional intelligence tests, psychological tests, because I believe that Latin America has been governed by narcissists and sociopaths. And I always say when people tell me because of the way that I express myself, right, that they say, oh, you have mental problems. And I'm like, yeah, I am, you know, like I, I have no problem to be you know, tested uh, in, in psychology tests or MRI or whatever, but just please make it very neutral. Because if you put me with, with conservative shrinks or with socialist shrinks, of course, they're going to declare me crazy, right? But yeah. I do believe that emotional intelligence is something that the world needs in their leaders, you know, and not only in Latin America, worldwide it is, is something that is highly needed. No. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from my conversation with Gloria Alvarez and Eduardo Marti about the rise of Javier Millet in Argentina. For the full conversation, click right here. For another clip from that conversation, go right here.